Coming up on First at Four, the State House has voted to impeach a Commonwealth's attorney following his announced resignation. We'll take a look at what comes next. And one Floyd County teacher is being featured on CBS's Mission Unstoppable. And keeping an eye on the potential for some sleet and snow moving into part of the region this weekend. That breakdown coming up as First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. For the first time in three decades, the State House has moved forward with an impeachment petition. The impeachment of Commonwealth's attorney Ronnie Lee Goldie Jr. started last month. Senate President Robert Stivers was asked about where the process currently stands. Samantha Valentino has more on what's next. The Kentucky Constitution prescribed the process of impeachment and removal of public officials, granting the House of Representatives the sole power of impeachment. On Tuesday, the House voted in a unanimous bipartisan vote to impeach Commonwealth Attorney Ronnie Lee Goldie Jr. Once someone says, oh, we ought to impeach this person, uh, it's submitted to a committee to decide whether or not they're actually going to do it. Um, the impeachment, the committee then says, yes, we want to impeach this person. It goes to the full House. The full House votes on it, uh, and that's what just happened was the House voted to do an impeachment. Goldie is accused of doing favors for a woman facing prosecution in exchange for nude photos of her. He was suspended last September. He resigned on Wednesday rather than go through the impeachment process. The Senate is responsible for trying the impeachment. We are the triers. In fact, we are to be considered jurors, so we're not going to express an opinion. We're not going to look at the articles until they come through the formal process. We need to be fair, neutral, and detached as jurors of this type of proceeding. Additionally, the Constitution prohibits any person who has been impeached and removed from holding, quote, any office of honor, trust, or profit under this Commonwealth. While Goldie resigned on Wednesday, his resignation will not go into effect until the end of the month. This has been a conditional resignation effective only on a certain date. So there can always be a withdrawal or revocation, I understand, um, of a resignation. So uh, from communications I had with my general counsel, that's why they proceeded to move it forward and send it to the Senate. In Frankfurt, Samantha Valentino, WKYT. Now, Goldie represented several counties in northeastern Kentucky. Senator Stivers could not speak to whether or not he anticipates this impeachment wrapping up by the end of the session, saying he has no preconceived notions of what it will entail. An eastern Kentucky town is holding a festival celebrating an upcoming holiday. The city of Whitesburg is hosting its first Valentine's Day market today. Vendors set up along Main Street with food, jewelry, and other things to sell. Whitesburg Public Relations Director Lee Adams says they are glad to add something after losing last year's Mountain Heritage Festival. Uh, we had some folks at the Christmas uh, market ask us to redo this or do it, you know, again each uh, holiday, and they had done real well, so we thought Valentine's Day would be the perfect time to open it up again. Now, the market closes at 5 p.m. today, so you only have a few more minutes to get there. We'll have more on one of those vendors coming up at 6. After winning an Enfi Maker Award, one Floyd County teacher is being featured on CBS's Mission Unstoppable. Tabitha Berger is a teacher at Floyd County School of Innovation. Berger is a recent Enfi Maker Award winner from the Infosys Foundation and is also an alumni of the foundation's signature teacher development program, the Pathfinders Institute. Along with winning the award, Berger was awarded $10,000 to improve STEM programs in Floyd County. Berger said, education is all about the learning experience and watching students work through complex problems is what she enjoys every day. They just look at it differently. They get engaged and it's, it's really our students are amazing um, and just to watch them talk like you can watch them talk it out and think through it and solve these problems it's the best part of my day now you can catch burger's segment on mission unstoppable next saturday february 18th at 11 a.m right here on wymt 
We'll have more about her story as an Enfy maker tonight at 6. Not too bad out there this afternoon. A whole lot less windy compared to yesterday and We've actually seen a little bit of sunshine out there. There's a look from downtown Hazard overlooking Triangle Park. A busy afternoon in downtown Hazard. Mid 40s out there. Beautiful blue skies. Just a few of those contrails and high cirrus clouds out there. Really a beautiful look to things. UVA wise a little more overcast, but still seeing some of that sunshine filter through. Mid 40s out there in southwest Virginia. Many of us sitting in the uh, middle and upper 40s, lower 50s in many spots. Jonesville, the warm spot right now at 54. So, yeah, we're above average, but <laughs> still 20 degrees cooler than yesterday. All quiet, just a few of those clouds hanging on. I think we'll start to see a decrease, a general decrease in cloud cover as we head later on into tonight and through tomorrow. So keep that first alert weather app handy nonetheless. We'll continue to see the potential again for a few of those showers. Not tonight, not tomorrow, but as we head tomorrow night and into Sunday. And that's something we're going to watch very, very closely. Details on that in a few minutes. Steve. Evan, thank you. Authorities have arrested one man in connection with a New Jersey teacher who was found dead last week. Marshals took 36-year-old Cesar Santana into custody shortly after midnight in a Miami motel. He's facing charges of concealing human remains. Those remains belong to 33-year-old Jersey City teacher Luz Hernandez. She was reported missing earlier this week and the next day her body was found in a shallow grave in nearby Kearney. Hernandez died from blunt force trauma to the head and compression to the neck. Former NFL quarterback Brett Favre has filed defamation lawsuits against two sports commentators and the Mississippi State Auditor. A 2020 state audit found tens of millions of dollars from the state's welfare program were improperly used. The state of Mississippi is suing the three-time MVP and others to recoup millions of dollars in misspent welfare money. In the defamation suits, Favre claimed sports commentators Shannon Sharp and Pat McAfee and Mississippi State Auditor Shad White smeared his name in the media over the situation. Favre returned the $1.1 million after the state auditor issued a demand letter. Coming up on First at Four with Valentine's Day approaching, we'll have some tips for couples to make sure financial issues do not ruin the romance. And watching a brief pattern change this weekend before warmer conditions work back in next week. The full breakdown ahead. 